Chapter six, rat-a-tat-tat. When you think of the word rat, what is the next thing to come into your head? Rat vermin, rat sewer, rat disease, rat bite, rat plague, rat catcher, rat-a-tat-tat. Rats are the most unloved living things on the planet. Kittens, puppies, bunnies, hamsters, gerbils, guinea pigs, baby elephants, koala bears, piglets, penguins, butterflies. Loved. Slugs, spiders, stinging nettles, wasps, worms, jellyfish, farts, Piers Morgan, rats. Unloved. However, what if I told you that what Zoe found in her room that night was a baby rat? Yes, this was the cutest, sweetest, littlest baby rat you can imagine. And it was crouching in the corner of her room, nibbling on one of her dirty hole ridden socks. With a tiny pink twitching nose, furry ears and huge, deep, hopeful eyes, this was a rat that could win first prize in a vermin beauty pageant. This explained the mysterious droppings that Zoe had recently found in her room. It must have been this little mite. Well, it certainly wasn't me. <laughs> Zoe had always thought she would be terrified if she ever saw a rat. Her stepmother even kept rat poison in the kitchen, as there was always talk of an infestation in the crumbling block of flats. However, this rat didn't seem very terrifying. In fact, if anything, the rat appeared to be terrified of Zoe. When the floorboard creaked as she approached, it skirted the wall and hid under her bed. Don't be scared, little one, whispered Zoe. Slowly she put her hand under the bed to try and stroke the rat. It shivered in fear at first, its fur standing up on end. Shh, shh, said Zoe comfortingly. Little by little, the rat made its way through the garden of dust and dirt under Zoe's creaky little bed and approached her hand. It sniffed her fingers before licking one, then another. Sheila was too idle to cook and Zoe was so starving she had stolen a bag of her stepmother's dreaded prawn cocktail crisps for her dinner. The rat must have been able to smell them on her fingers and despite Zoe's grave misgivings about the snack, which bore no relation to prawns or indeed cocktails, the rat didn't seem to mind. Zoe let out a little giggle. The nibbling tickled her. She lifted her hand to stroke the rat and it ducked underneath and raced to the far corner of the room. Shh, shh, come on. I, I only want to give you a stroke, implored Zoe. The rat peeped at her with uncertainty before tentatively, paw by paw, making its way over to her hand. She brushed its fur with her little finger as lightly as she could. The fur was a lot softer than she imagined. Not as soft as ginger nuts, nothing was, but surprisingly soft nonetheless. One by one, Zoe's fingers lowered and soon she was stroking the top of the rat's head. Zoe let her fingers trickle down its neck and back. The rat arched its back to meet her hand. Most likely, it had never been shown such tenderness before. Certainly not by a human. Not only was there enough rat poison in the world to kill every rat 10 times over, but when people saw a rat, they would generally either scream or reach for a broom to whack it with. Looking at this little tiddler now, though, it was hard for Zoe to understand why anyone would want to harm him. Suddenly, the rat's little ears shot up and Zoe quickly turned her head. Her parents' bedroom door was opening and she could hear her stepmother thundering along the hallway, huffing with each step. Hurriedly, Zoe snatched up the rat, cupped it in her hands and jumped back into bed. Sheila would go crazy if she knew her stepdaughter was in bed, cuddling a rodent. Zoe took the duvet between her teeth and hid under the covers. She waited and listened. The bathroom door creaked open and closed, and Zoe could hear the muffled sound of her stepmother thudding down onto the cracked toilet seat. 
Zoe sighed and opened her hands. The baby rat was safe. For now. She let the little rodent scamper over her hands and onto her torn pyjama top. She made a little kissing noise, just like the one she used to do with ginger nut. And just like her hamster used to, the rat approached her face. Zoe planted a little kiss on its nose. She pushed a dent in the pillow next to her head and gently laid the rat down into it. It fitted perfectly and soon she could hear it snoring very quietly next to her. If you have never heard a rat snoring before, this is what it sounds like. Now, how on earth am I going to keep you a secret? Zoe whispered. 